Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. The United States has always possessed an impressive and capable Navy. From aircraft carriers to nuclear submarines and destroyers and more, the Navy's fleet encompasses nearly 500 ships in total. Since the early 2000s, the Navy has been investing billions of dollars into a new class of boat called a littoral combat ship, or LCS. These small surface vessels are designed to move quickly and attack efficiently in shallow waters near shore. One of the most recent additions to the LCS fleet is the USS Billings, which was launched in 2017. Like many newer vessels, the Billings was constructed onshore and launched via a slipway. This sideways launch system is ideal for deploying a boat into a channel or river and features the boat positioned atop a steel frame. This frame is attached to several slanted beams, which, when released, allow the ship to slide into the water powered only by its own weight. Before entering active service, newly launched U.S. Navy ships will typically undergo what's known as a commissioning ceremony. Of USS Little Rock. This short presentation features guest speakers, naval commanders, and other naval VIPs talking about the vessel, its mission, and the United States Navy in general. Present the industry team that built this remarkable ship before us. Many people have described it as similar to a graduation ceremony for a ship. Still, it is a very serious affair with a long-held tradition. The public is typically invited, as are the families of the sailors who are to serve aboard the ship. For USS Billings, but I also one of the highlights of the ceremony is when the captain of the ship officially reports for duty. You're a great Navy. Captain, USS Billings is manned and ready, sir. Very well. Commodore Johnson, USS Billings is manned and ready. I report for duty. Very well. We have already begun developing missions and protocols. The USS Billings was commissioned on August 3rd of 2019 in Florida in an hour-long ceremony. Officer of the deck, set the first watch. Aye, aye, sir. Since then, the ship and her crew of roughly 50 have seen several deployments, mostly in the Eastern Pacific and the Caribbean. Thanks to the overall versatility of the 378-foot vessel, it can easily switch between different mission types including anti-drug trafficking efforts. Its stern internal ramp can deploy and retrieve RHIBs and other high-speed boats. It also features a flight deck and a built-in aircraft hangar that can fit multiple helicopters or drones for reconnaissance purposes. From design to deployment, Hardly an inch of space is wasted aboard an LCS ship, ensuring that it has everything it needs to perform its duties. So far, the LCS model has proved incredibly successful. So the U.S. Navy will likely construct and commission more of these vessels in the future. LCS are designed to be a uh, single mission platform that has modularity that can change out uh, where that principal mission set is uh, assigned to. Uh, so the modularity gives us the ability uh, based upon what the requirements for the mission sets are 
to swap out the mission package in, uh, computing environment and the mission package hardware to execute different mission sets uh, throughout the fleet commander's areas of responsibility. Like most large naval ships, the USS Billings and other LCS vessels are designed to be entirely self-sufficient. Life on board can be hectic, as the ships are designed to leverage technology and utilize minimal human resources. Depending on the mission package selected, the vessel will shift into different configurations to best deal with that threat. Vessels like the Billings are also very well armed, many boasting a wide array of surface-to-air missiles and deck-mounted remote control guns like the MK-110. But despite these lethal capabilities, many LCS will open their doors to the public at times. Tours like this allow civilians to get an idea of what life is like aboard a highly advanced naval vessel. With crew members showcasing everything from the ship's weaponry to firefighting tactics and more. Depending on their mission, vessels like the Billings can sometimes spend months away from shore at a time. And since they are designed to operate as stealthily as possible, underway replenishment is not always an option. This is where the ship's large aft flight deck comes in handy. From here, the ship can deploy helicopters and drones for reconnaissance purposes. However, they can also receive supplies via a process known as vertical replenishment. That said, landing a helicopter aboard a moving ship in the middle of the ocean is no easy task. That's why the Navy requires its pilots to qualify for deck landings. This can consist of dozens of touch-and-go practice runs in a single day, but ultimately ensures the safety of both the helicopter crew and everyone aboard the ship. Fortunately, vertical replenishment, or VERTREP, doesn't require the helicopter to actually land aboard the ship. Instead, it uses a large hoist and netting system to move supplies from one boat to another. Known as sling loading, this process requires direct coordination with the flight deck crews of both ships to be done safely. With one side loading the supplies and another recovering them after they're dropped on the deck. These supplies are vital to an LCS's ability to continue its mission. They include everything from ammunition to food to medicine and more. This process is not limited to any one type of ship either. Aircraft carriers like the USS America will also utilize vertical replenishment when other methods of transferring supplies are unavailable. Sling loading operations are one of the primary reasons why helicopters remain so vital to militaries worldwide. These types of operations have been around for decades. Having been used in peacetime and direct combat to deliver supplies, vehicles, and other crucial materials to the front lines. One of the most commonly used helicopter models for sling loading operations is the CH-47 Chinook. A massive dual rotor copter it can carry up to 24,000 pounds from special hooks built into the fuselage. Again, this process requires much coordination with troops on the ground who must get underneath the hovering Chinook to attach the payload. Once the hooks are in place, they retreat to a safe distance while the helicopter crew does what they do best.
The Chinook was first introduced back in 1962, which means it's been in active service for more than 60 years. As more of these helicopters are phased out, the U.S. Marine Corps and the U.S. Navy have come to rely on another heavy lifting helicopter, the Sikorsky CH-53E Super Stallion. At 100 feet in length and boasting a rotor diameter of 79 feet, the Stallion is an extremely powerful aircraft with the ability to lift external payloads of up to 36,000 pounds. Like the Chinook, the CH-53 can refuel in mid-air, even while carrying a full payload. This gives the helicopter incredible range and efficiency. These capabilities are becoming increasingly important on the modern battlefield, as militaries worldwide look for new ways to get their troops and supplies they need in remote or harsh environments. Technology has drastically changed how armies, air forces, and navies protect their own and engage the enemy. LCS vessels like the USS Billings are a great example of the military adapting to a new kind of warfare. However, there will always be a need for vehicles that can carry heavy loads from one place to another, ensuring that even advanced vessels get the supplies they need to carry on. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.